This is John. This is Steve. This is Ryan. Coming to you from Flint's beautiful east side, Studio 1714. So, anyway, how about Manning Court? Manning Court. Yeah. See, it's been going on for quite a while here, you know? Yeah, it really has. Um, you guys know the history of Manning Court? Not fully, no. Not fully. Cliff Notes version for you guys. Basically, 19, early 1900s, Jay Dallas Dort, who was one of the founders of GM, uh, built his mansion right where the Flint Institute of Music is today. And behind his house, right around 1904-1905, he built English-style cottages for his workers to live. Which was really amazing because, you know, what person that had a lot of money that built a mansion wants the damn workers right behind them? You know what I mean? I sure in the hell wouldn't. So they built the houses behind, the, behind his house, and Manning did it. He was an architect. Uh, Manning was also the architect who helped J. Dallas Dort build our park systems in Flint. Okay. Okay. J. Dallas Dort was very, uh, very involved in the park system. He was like the, one of the persons that really pushed it and made it happen. So Manning not only did those houses, but he helped you know, the park systems come along. And to bring you up to speed a little more, the Flint Institute of Music and the Flint Cultural Center Corporation wants to tear those houses down or move the houses to make way for more parking for expansion for the Flint Institute of Music. Um, back in November, the Flint Historic District Commission voted 4-3 to three to allow demolition of those properties. Mm -hmm. um, and we revisited that issue last Thursday where we actually talked about rescinding our vote to not allow demolition of the properties. Okay. So... That's kind of the history of what's happened with Manning Court. So what is happening with them? What's happening with them? Well, at our last Thursday's meeting, we actually voted not to rescind our, our motion to allow demolition. The Cultural Center is looking into ways to move the houses now to Carriage Town or other areas in the city to preserve them. And uh, the Flint Historic District Commission last Thursday uh, made a motion to rescind our decision to allow demolition, and it failed four to two. That's good. And it seems like you took quite a bit of flat for your vote, correct? Yes, I did. Okay. So it's like, uh, now it's like, is it still limbo, this, uh, the, the outcome, or? Well, no, I mean, we, we voted 4-2. to two. Uh, I was one of the people who voted not to allow, not to rescind our vote. Uh, the first vote I allowed, I voted against demolition. Okay. This time I felt that there were alternatives. Uh, architect came to that meeting and said, here's things that you can do, here's some alternatives. Okay. I felt that those alternatives weren't presented to the Cultural Center and they weren't allowed to really look at those alternatives. Plus the Cultural Center made it very clear that they don't want to tear those houses down. So I felt that uh, we need to really go, go to them first of all and try to work on these alternatives before we make any big change in course. You know, we did allow demolition in the beginning. Um, it, it was a 4-2 to two vote. Even if I would have voted against rescinding, it still would have been a 3-3 three, three tie, which means the motion's dead. Yeah, and then would that have to be re-brought back up for a uh, vote again and again? It would have to, yeah. So basically, and it, that's the other thing, is if one of the persons on the other side, like for instance, I voted 4-2, to two, not to, I voted on the 4 side, not to allow us to rescind our vote, it takes another person to bring it back to the table. Mm -hmm. So. In essence, somebody on that commission every month could bring up this issue again to rescind the vote or not to allow them to tear it down. So what's the deadline where they're going to start construction or you know, the parking facilities or whatever? What's well, that? there's still a lawsuit going on. The Genesee County Historical Society and the uh, a lady that lives on Manning Court, the last lady, Mrs. Uh, McDonald, mm -hmm. uh, her mom is Mrs. Hauser. Okay. There's a lawsuit. They sued the City of Flint, the Flint Historic District Commission, and the Cultural Center to block the demolition or moving of those homes. So even though we voted the way we did last Thursday, it's still got to run its course through the court system. So it, to be honest with you, according to the attorneys, it could be six months to a year before anything even happens over there. That's good. Uh, that's, and that's probably just driving up costs either way for like even want to move them. Or but if you she want to still them. lives on the site? Yes. One, there's a one privately owned house on the site, and she still lives there. So How old is this woman? She, I, I don't really know. So I know the Hauser family. She's fairly young. Personally, because they've been there, um, they were quite adamant about staying back in the 80s when they approached us. Uh, well, my family had property around the corner from where Manning Court is, and we sold it because they gave us the price we wanted for our properties. But um, the Hauser family, Dr. Hauser was a local dermatologist, and um, I don't know if he's still alive or not, but I think his, I don't think his, I know that one of his daughters passed away when I was in high school with her. Anyway, um, Anyway, they were quite able to staying put. You know, they they stood they stood at their ground, and everything else was tore around them. They stayed there. Yeah. You know, they had those three houses there. Basically, we're talking about now on Manning Court. Um, Miner Jack Miner lived in one of those houses. He did. Yeah. Yes. 
Who actually owns those houses now? Those houses are owned by the Flint Cultural Center Corporation. It's the corporation that kind of oversees all the institutions in the cultural center area. Okay. So, because um, anyway, so, so it's kind of a uh, so another thing that's you know you gotta you kind of receive some flack for your vote and just like another thing we talked about one of the segments is it seems like people are kind of you're kind of a controversial person even if you don't want to be or not. Sure, it's yeah. it's part of the territory, you know. Yeah. It's it's me being involved. Anytime you get involved, you're, someone's gonna be mad, you know. And I voted the way I felt I needed to vote. And you know, I don't. I'm not sorry for that. And and I did what I had to do. So I think I did what I felt was right. So I think this is good that you get a chance to say what you had to say because I don't think that the major press is covering it off, and you're just and people are going to talk amongst themselves. If you got this out there, I think people are at least know your side of the issue. Sure. And I think that's beneficial because I think you're. I think you got some positive things in mind for the Flynn area, and I you know I welcome that. You know. Well, and I think I think that a compromise is important here because. We could actually lose these houses altogether. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Which was kind of really it's losing a piece of Flint. Yeah, you know? I mean, we could lose them altogether. So obviously, they got the permission to tear them down. And it's funny because it's kind of like a smoke screen. You know, Ryan voted this way, and that's what it's all about at this point, when it really should be about how can we save these houses. Mm -hmm. If I would have voted against demolition, it still would have been a tie vote once again. It still would not have passed, and they still could have torn them down. So my vote is really. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's really irrelevant here. The, the relevant thing here is the fact that we have four houses that we need to come up with a plan either to stay where they're at or to move these houses somewhere to preserve them for future generations. That's what's really important right. here. Because Flint seems to have lost quite a bit of their historical buildings and their you know places. I mean, and without any regard. I mean, this place across the street from around the corner from across the street from talk about was a Civil War veteran's house, and they tore that down without any fanfare, no protest. And he wrote a book about his experiences in the Civil War. It's one of the most uh, widely cited books about the Civil War era. His last name was Foot. I can't remember his first name, but you know he lived right across the street from where my family had a home. So, wow. you know they let that go, and they, they, nobody in Flint stood up against that. And it was torn down about five years ago. That house. So, right. I, I don't know why people just want to give up what we have as the historical part. I mean. I think mean, you can't hold on to the past, they say, but those were nice buildings. You right. Know? And the other thing you can hold on to the past, yeah. though. That's what's right. And the other thing to keep in mind is a cultural center. I mean, we have a lot of negative things happening in the city right now, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of positive things happening in the right. city. And the cultural center, by far, is one of the most important things that are that are going on in the city. Yeah. And I'd hate to hinder any development or anything to do with the cultural center because of the fact that. You know, we want to save four houses. Because they're, they're not being like, I never could perceive them at the Cultural Center Corporation as some kind of bad guys. I mean, the buildings are there, but let's face it, I would think, I could see the benefit of having expanded parking facilities next to those, the Sloan, the Whiting, the, um, what was it, Sloan, the Planetarium, or all that stuff. I can see where that would be a benefit, you know. So I, it's, like, it's, a, it's a quandary. It's the best yeah, it's a, it it's wasn't an easy decision. It wasn't an easy decision for any of us right. on the commission. I mean, we all... It was a tough decision. Each one of us liked the Cultural Center, and each one of us are preservationists. Right. I don't care how you voted. We're all preservationists. And we want to see the history preserved. And I think now the important thing is to move forward and to come up with a comprehensive plan that allows us to preserve these four houses, whether it's there, whether it's somewhere in the Cultural Center, whether it's Carriage Town, where they're talking about moving them to now. Let's preserve those houses so you know we'll have them for another hundred years. Yeah, because I mean, they're, they're part of a significant part of Flint and also industrial history of the United States, I would say, you know. So what's the cost going to be to move them? You know, I'm not familiar with all, I'm not in with that committee, but the estimates that I've heard so far is somewhere between uh, hundred and hundred and fifty thousand dollars. For all, all four houses. All four houses. All four houses. Yeah. Well, that's Basically not between bad 12 for and... For what you're preserving. Right. Yeah. It's not really... I don't see that as being a whole lot for what you're preserving. Because I see, I can see where you could spend the money somewhere else, and it would be well spent too. But as much as we've, uh, I've basically we we allowed our government to piss away with you know high idealistic plans that didn't go anywhere. These are rather, this are a very pragmatic plan and wouldn't cost all that much, I think. So okay. anyway, thanks for coming in. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. This, this is Steve. This is John. Studio seventeen fourteen.